Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to learn how to work with regular expressions in Python using the built-in RE module. And sometimes you'll hear these called regexes. Now, I recently released a video on regular expressions as a standalone topic because they can actually be used independently of any one programming language. So you can use them to search for text patterns within text editors and things like that. So this video will use a lot of those same, same examples that I used in that video, except here we're going to see a lot more that is Python specific. So if you've never used regular expressions, they basically allow us to search for and match specific patterns of text. And they can look extremely complicated, but that's mainly because there's just so much that we can do with them. So you can create a regular expression for just about any pattern of text that you can think of. So let's look at some examples and see what this looks like. So I have a Python module here that we're going to use to search for some simple patterns to start out. So first of all, to use regular expressions within Python, we need to import the RE module, which obviously stands for regular expressions. So I'm doing that up here on line one, and the text that we're going to be searching is this multi-line string here. So the variable name is text to search, and we have a lot of things in here in this multi-line string. So you can see at the top, we have some lowercase, some uppercase, some digits, uh, just some special characters, a URL, phone numbers, and some names. And I also have a simple sentence here that we're going to use in an example as well. Now, before writing our first regular expression, we need to know what a raw string is because we're going to be using these a lot throughout this video. Now, a raw string in Python is just a string prefixed with an R, and that tells Python not to handle backslashes in any special way. So, for example, normally backslashes are used to specify tabs or new lines and things like that. So, if I was to print out the string backslash T, and then just the text tab. So if I run this, then we can see that Python replaced our backslash T with an actual tab. But a raw string will just interpret the string literally. So if we put an R in front of this string and then run this, then we can see that the backslash is no longer handled in any special way. And that's important for us because we want our regular expressions to interpret the strings we're passing in and not have Python doing any uh, anything to them first. So we'll be using these raw strings throughout the video. So just be aware of what these are. Okay, so let's write some expressions and search for some patterns. So to write our patterns, I'm going to use the re.compile method. The compile method will allow us to separate out our patterns into a variable and also will make it easier to reuse that variable to perform multiple searches. So to use this, we can just say that our pattern is equal to re.compile and now we can specify our pattern. So first, let's just create a pattern that matches some literal characters. So if we just wanted to search for the literal text ABC, then we could say R for our raw string, and then we could just pass in the literal text ABC. And now that we have that pattern specified, now let's actually search through our text with that pattern. So I'm going to create a variable here called matches, and I'm going to set this equal to that pattern dot find iter, and I'll explain this more in just a second. But what we want to search is our very long string up here at the top, our multi-line string called text to search. So I'm going to paste that in. And now to print out all of our matches, I'm just going to do a for loop and I'm going to say for match in matches, print out the match. So if we save that and run it, then we can see that this find iter method returns an iterator that contains all of the matches. So we're going to look at more regular expression methods later in the video, but I think that find iter is one of the best for gathering all of the matches in an easy to read format. So each of these match objects shows us the span and the match itself. So the span is the beginning and end index of the match. So when we search this text with this pattern using the find iter method, it only found one match of ABC and it found it in our alphabet from indexes one to four. Now these indexes are useful because it allows us to use the string slicing functionality in Python where we could just plug in these values and get the exact match. So if I was to print out our string from indexes one to four, so I will print out uh, text to search from indexes one to four. Now if I run that, then we can see that we got ABC. And that is the exact value that we matched. Now, if you've never seen this string slicing functionality before and would like to see more of what you can do with that, then I do have a separate video on that specific topic. And I'll put a link to that in the description section below. But for now, I'll just go ahead and remove that. Now, 
if I make my screen a little larger here, and if we look at our text to search, then this is the literal ABC that it matched right here. But notice it didn't match this capital ABC, and that's because this is case sensitive. And this search right now is also looking specifically for ABC in that order. So if we were to instead come down here and search for CBA and run that, then you can see that we don't get any matches. Now, if we scroll up here and look at this meta character section, then I have some examples of characters that I say need to be escaped. So say, for example, that I wanted to search for a literal period. Now, if I just put a period in my search, so if I change my pattern to where it is only searching for a period and I run this, then we can see where it does this weird thing where it matches almost everything. And that's because the dot is a special character in regular expressions. And we'll see what that is in just a second. But if we just want to actually search for a period, then we have to escape it. And we can escape these characters with a backslash. So within my pattern here, I'm going to put a backslash before the period. And if I run that, then we can see that if we look at all of our matches here, then all of these matches are actual literal periods uh, from our text. So escaping those characters goes for any of these characters here in the meta characters section that I say needs to be escaped. Now, one practical example of this might be a URL. So I have a URL here that is coreyms.com. Now, if we wanted to match this exact URL, then we would need to escape the dot in that URL by saying something like, so I'll change my um, search pattern here, and I'll just search for a literal Corey MS. And then for the dot, I would need to escape that dot, so backslash dot com. So if I save that and run it, then we can see that we did match that URL. Okay, so a literal search isn't too exciting because that's something that we probably already know how to do within Python. Really, we want to use regular expressions to search for patterns. And to do this, we're going to use some of those meta characters that we were just escaping. So in my snippets file here, I have a list of values where we can see the types of characters that we can match. And I'm going to split these into two columns so that it stays in view while we're going over these. And I'll just move this over here and then go back to my simple file example that we were just looking at. Okay, so now let's walk through each of these and see what we can match using regular expressions. So we can see that the dot, which we kind of looked at a little bit ago, the dot matches any character except a new line. So if I come in here and just put a literal dot for our uh, regular expression with no backslash, then if we run this, then we can see that all of our matches match just about any character, except it doesn't match new lines. So it's matching all of the characters up here in our text to search that is not a new line. So you can see that we have a lot of those matches. Now the backslash D matches any digit between zero and nine. So if I put in a backslash D for our pattern here and run that, then you can see that all of our matches are digits between zero and nine. So there's not as many, but uh, you can see that they're all digits. Now the uppercase D matches anything that is not a digit. And you'll see that this is kind of a common theme with these special characters here. So you can see that the capital W matches uh, not a word. We haven't gone over that yet, but the capital S matches not a white space. So the capital letters basically negate whatever the lowercase version means. So capital D is not a digit. So if we put that in as our pattern and save that and run it, then you can see that we have a lot of matches here, but all of these are matches that are not a digit. So you won't find any digits here in our matches. Now the lowercase w is a pretty common search. This is for a word character, and a word character is anything that is a lowercase letter, an uppercase letter, a digit, or an underscore. So if we search for a backslash lowercase w and run that, then you can see that all of these are either going to be uh, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, uh, digits, which we have some digits here, or underscores. I don't think I have any underscores in our text to search. 
So just like I was saying before, the uppercase W will match anything that is not a word character. So it's basically the opposite. So I will search for an uppercase W. If we run that, then we can see that these are everything that are not our word characters. So we have no lowercase letters, no uppercase letters, no digits, and no underscores. The backslash S here matches any white space. So that consists of spaces, tabs, and new lines. So if I put in a lowercase s here for our search and run that, then you can see that we get all spaces, new lines, which are these backslash ends. Uh, and I don't think I have any tabs in here, but it would match tabs as well. Now the uppercase S matches anything that's not white space. So anything that's not a space or a tab or a new line. So if we search for that and run it, then you can see that we might have a lot of matches in here, but none of these are spaces or tabs or new lines. Now the ones a little bit lower here, these are a little bit different. Now these are called anchors. They don't actually match any characters, uh, but rather in visible positions before or after characters. And we can use this in conjunction with other patterns we're searching for. So first we have this backslash B, which is a word boundary. And word boundaries are indicated by white space or a non-alphanumeric character. So for example, if I scroll up here into our text to search, you can see that I have these three ha's right here. Now let's say that we wanted to match all of the ha's that have a word boundary directly before. So we can search that. If we go down here to our pattern, I can search that by saying backslash B, which is our word boundary, and then that literal text that we're searching for. So I'll just search for ha. And if I save that and run it, then we can see that it matched two of these. And I'm gonna scroll up here and show you which ones because it's not entirely clear just by glancing at the spans but it's matching the first one here because the start of the line is a word boundary. And it's also matching the second one here because this space is also a word boundary. Now it's not matching this last one because there's no word boundary before it. This is in the middle of a word. Now, if we replace our search instead of a lowercase b, we use an uppercase b and save that and run it, then you can see that we have one match because that is matching all of these ha's that do not have a word boundary before it. So if we scroll up here to the top, then basically it's just the opposite of our last search. So it's matching this last one because it is the only one that does not have a word boundary before it. Okay, so moving on, we have this caret and this dollar sign and the caret will match a position that is the beginning of a string and the dollar sign will match a position that is the end of the string. So if I scroll down here to our pattern, then I have a small sentence variable here that I'm gonna to use to demonstrate this. So let me spread this over here a little bit so that that fits on one line again. Now I'm gonna change the text that we're searching to this sentence instead of the text to search. So I'm gonna paste that in there. Now first we'll look at the caret, which is the anchor for the beginning of a string. So if I was to search a pattern and say, let's say, so a caret, and then I'm gonna search for the literal text start. So if I run that, then we can see that it's searching for the literal text start that is at the beginning of that string, of that sentence. So if I change this to something that is not at the start, then run that, then you can see that now we get no match. So this pattern here is actually in our sentence, but the character says that it has to be at the start. So if I undo that, then we can see that that matched our start string there because it is at the beginning of the string. And we can do something similar to match the end of the string using the dollar sign. So if I search for the literal text um, E-N-D and then follow that with a dollar sign and then save that and run it, then you can see that it matched this text here that's at the end of our string um, because we have the dollar sign there. Now, if I was to replace this, with something that is in our string, but it is not at the end of the string and run that, then you can see that even though we have A's in this string, it doesn't match because it's not at the end. Okay, so now I'm gonna change our search back to the text to search. And now we're gonna look at some practical examples. So I'm just gonna move the snippets file back here to one panel, and we will keep looking at that uh, throughout the video. And then I'll go back to my simple.py here. So now let's say that we wanted to match these phone numbers here within our multi-line string. 
So let's write some regular expressions to do this. Now we can't just type in a literal search because they're all different. Now they have a similar pattern, but they're not all the same digits. So in this case, we would need to use the meta characters instead of literal characters. Now we just uh, have the pattern of three digits here and then a dash, and this one has a period. And then we have three more digits and then a dash or a period and then four digits. So let's go ahead and create the pattern to match this. So I'll try to fit both of these into the screen here at once. So we know that we can match any digit with a backslash D. Now that will match any single digit in the text like we saw before. But with a phone number, we can start off, start off by matching three digits in a row. So I'm gonna put in three backslash Ds there. So now if we run it at this point, then you can see that all of our matches are all the three different combinations of three digits in our text to search. Well, actually they're in a row. So if I go up here to the top, then you can see first it matched one, two, three, and then four, five, six as the next one, and then seven, eight, nine, and then it moves down to the three digits of our phone number. So that's a little bit closer, but we need to complete this pattern. So now that we're matching those first three digits, now we're getting to the point in our phone number where we can match either a dash or a dot. So for now, let's just match any character uh, now, if we remember from our snippets, the dot will match any character. So if I just put this in after our three digits, and that should match the hyphen or the dot, but it should also match anything else. So now let's continue and match the next three digits. So just three more backslash Ds. And then we get to the point where we're going to match another dash or a dot. So we'll just put in another dot to match any character there. And now we're going to match four more digits. So four backslash Ds. So if I save that and run it, then we can see that it matched. Let me make this a little smaller here. Then we can see that it matched both of our phone numbers from our text up here. So now we're starting to see how this could be pretty powerful. So I have a data dot text file here and this has a bunch of fake names and numbers and addresses and emails. So let's open this file in Python and then run our regular expression against its contents and see if we can parse out the phone numbers from this text file. So first to open this file, let me scroll down here to the bottom and I'll put these in here. So first we want to open the file and we can do that with, uh, with open and that is data txt and that's in the same directory so we can just spell it out like that without a full path and then we want to read this file as f now if you're unfamiliar with file objects then i do have a separate video on that as well and i'll leave a uh, link to that in the description section below so now let's read in the contents of this file so i'm going to create a new variable here and call this contents and then we're going to set this equal to this f which is our file f dot read and that'll read in all of the contents and now to search the contents of that file for our pattern using our regular expression we can just copy our previous match here so i'm going to copy in this line to get our matches and paste that in and also i'm going to uh, cut this out and move this up here and copy comment that out for now and paste that in down here Okay, so what we're doing here is we're reading in the contents of that file. And now we're using the same pattern that we used up here to match our phone numbers in our text. And now we want to search our contents instead of that text to search. And then we're just going to uh, print out all of those matches. And we've got these matches commented out, so those shouldn't show anything. So I will go ahead and run this. Okay, so it looks like we are getting a Unicode decode error. I'm not sure why that's the case uh, because everything in that uh, data.txt file should be ASCII characters. Um, so to fix this really fast, I'm just going to put in an encoding equals UTF-8. Now, I will fix this by the time that I put these files up, so you shouldn't have to do this part. I'm not sure uh, why that is seeing a Unicode character in there. Um, but now that should solve it. So if I save that and run it, now we can see that we're getting all of our phone number matches from that data.txt file. So we can already see how using these regular expressions can be extremely useful for parsing information from our data. Okay, so now going back to our text within this symbol file. So I'm gonna comment out uh, the matches from the file there and uncomment out our 
uh, matches from this file. So now let's say that we only wanted to match a phone number if it had a dash or a dot. So right now, this pattern will match any separator that is here uh, because we are using the period in our matches, which matches any character. So if I put another number in here that uses a different separator, so for example, let me put another number that uses like an asterisk for a separator. So if I save that and run it, then you can see that our pattern is currently grabbing that phone number as well. So to only match the dash or the dot, we can use something called a character set. And a character set uses these square brackets with the characters that we want to match. So I'm going to put in these square, square brackets here, and now the characters that we want to match in this position. And we want to match a dash or a dot. So I'm also going to replace this period, which used to match any character. Now we're putting in a character set, and we only want to match a dash or a dot. So now if I save this and run it, then you can see that we're still matching our first two numbers here that have a dash and a dot, but we're not matching this third number that has that asterisk because it is not in our character set. Also, you probably noticed that we didn't need to escape our dot within a character set, and that's because character sets have some slightly different rules. Um, you can escape these characters if you'd like, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult to read. Now, even though the character set has multiple characters in the set, it's still only matching one character in our text. So it's matching a character that is either a dash or a dot. Now, if I was to put two dashes up here in one of these numbers and save that and run it, then you can see it doesn't match that because it only matches this first dash and then it moves right on to looking for another digit. And that's something that can throw people off when they first start working with regular expressions because if you look at these character sets, you can see a lot of different characters in here. In this one, we only have two characters in the character set, uh, but we'll see some sets later that are much larger. But even though we have multiple characters in these sets, it still only matches one character up here in our text. So just keep that in mind because sometimes it can throw people off when they have, you know, long character sets that uh, kind of look like something like this, but all of this would still only match one character. So now let me make sure that that number is back to normal and save that. So to look at another example of a character set, uh, let's say that we only wanted to match 800 and 900 numbers. So let me copy two of these numbers here and I will separate these with a dash and I'm going to make this one here an 800 number and then I'll make this one here a 900 number. So I'll save that and go down here to the bottom. Now to match 800 or 900 numbers, we're gonna to have to change our first three digits here. So the first digit, it's going to be either an eight or a nine. So that's a good use for a character set. So we'll create a character set and match either an eight or a nine. And now the next two digits are just both going to be literal zeros. So I'll put literal zeros in there, save that and run it. Then you can see for all of our matches, it printed out only the 800 and 900 numbers. So now if I perform that same search on the data file that we used before, so I'll copy out uh, our our comment out our matches there that we're looping through and uncomment our data.txt file. Now this is still using the same pattern and we just changed that pattern to match 800 and 900 numbers. So if I run this, then that same code now should only print out the 800 and 900 numbers from that file. And you can see from our matches here that that's what we get. So that's pretty cool to be able to now match uh, these more detailed patterns. So now I'm gonna remove this file section. I believe that's the last we're going to use that and uncomment out uh, that loop there. Now within a character set, the dash is actually a special character as well. When it is put at the beginning or end, it will just match the literal dash character, but when placed between values, it can specify a range of values. So for example, we know that the backslash D matches any digit, but if we only wanted to match digits between one and five, to do that, we could just change our entire pattern here to be a character set. and if we just put in a one dash five, then with this dash between those values, that's now going to specify a range. So if I save that and run it, if we look at our matches here, all of our matches are gonna be digits between one and five. And we can use this for letters as well. So if we wanted to match lowercase a through z, then we can just match a lowercase a through lowercase z. So if I save that and run it, and you'll see that all of our matches down here are lowercase letters. 
Now, if we wanted to match uppercase and lowercase letters, then we can just put these ranges back to back. So right after the lowercase a through z, then I can also just put in a range of uppercase a through z. So if I save that and run it, now you can see that all of our matches down here are either going to be uppercase letters or lowercase letters. And you could keep adding to that and add digits onto there if you'd like as well. Now, another special character in our character set is the carrot. So if you put a carrot at the beginning, then I mentioned before that outside of the character set, the carrot matches the beginning of a string. But within a character set, it negates the set and matches everything that is not in that character set. So for example, when I put the carrot before this character set here, it's going to now match everything that is not a lowercase or uppercase letter. So if we run this, then we can see that we get a lot of matches. We get a lot of new lines and digits and spaces and things like that, but none of these are lower or uppercase letters. So let's add to our text to search here. And let's say that we wanted to match the words cat, mat, pat, um, and all other three letter words that end in AT, but we don't want to match the word bat. Now to write a regular expression for that, instead of specifying all the characters except for a B, we could just use our uh, negation there of the character set and just say that we want everything that is not a B followed by a literal A T. So if we run that, then we can see that for our matches, we matched cat, mat, pat, but we did not match this bat. And that is because that caret negates that character set of only this B character. Okay, so now I'm going to remove those from our text. Now, everything that we've looked at has involved single characters so far. Uh, so for example, uh, this is saying match any single character that isn't a B followed by uh, an A followed by a T, but we can use uh, things called quantifiers to match more than one character at once. So let's go back to our original phone uh, number expression from earlier and we'll match any character for the separator for now. So I'm going to fill in that pattern. So we want three digits, uh, just a period to match any character for a separator, three more digits, a period for any separator, and then four digits. So just make sure that we type that correctly. Let me save that and run it. And you can see that we're still matching these numbers just fine. But you can see that we're searching for all of our digits, one character at a time. And it's easy to make mistakes uh, when you have a lot of these to type out. But we can use something called a quantifier to match multiple characters at a time. So let me open up my snippets file again here. And I'm going to, again, open this up into two columns and move this over. Now let me scroll down to the quantifiers and read through these. And also let me go to my simple example back here again so that we can see this. Okay, so our first quantifier here, we have an asterisk. And an asterisk will match zero or more of the pattern that we're looking for. Now a plus sign will match one or more. The question mark will match zero or one. And if we use these curly braces with a number inside, that will match that exact number of the pattern. If we use these curly braces with two numbers separated by a comma, that will match a range of numbers. And that first number is the minimum, and the second number is the maximum. So for our phone number over here, this would be a good case to use exact numbers. So instead of writing all of these out, I can just go back here to this first digit that we wanna match. I could put in curly braces and say that I wanna match three of those digits. And I can do the same thing for the uh, second section of digits there. And then for the last, we wanna match four digits at the end. So I can save that and run it, and you can see that we still get the same result. So that allows us to specify the amount of digits that we're looking for without needing to type them all out and possibly making a mistake along the way. Now here we're matching exact numbers, but sometimes we don't know the exact number and we'll need to use these other quantifiers. So for example, down here at the bottom of our text, we have these names and some lines start with the prefix of Mr., some start with Miss, and some start with Mrs. So let's say that we wanted to write a pattern that would match these prefixes and the uh, entire name that comes afterward. So to start off easy, let's first start by just matching the names that start with Mr. Now we can see that some of these have 
a period after the prefix and some do not. So Mr. Smith does not have a period here. So to handle this, let's see if I can fit all of this in here. Uh, I'm going to cut off our loop, but that's okay. So to write our pattern here, we want to search for Mr. And we want to have a period after here. So if we run this right now, then you see that we have two matches. Uh, but there are three misters up here. So it's matching both of these misters that have the period after the prefix, uh, but this one is not currently matching. Now to match that, we need to say that the period after the prefix is optional. And we can use the question mark quantifier to do this, which tells our pattern that we want to match either zero or one of those characters. So if I put a question mark after our period there and then rerun that, then we can see that now it is matching those MRs without the period. So now to complete this pattern, now after that optional period, we have a space, and now we're running into uppercase letters. So to match uppercase letters, we can use a character set like we looked at before, and we can just pass in a capital A through a capital Z to match all the uppercase letters. So now if we run this, then we can see that we are matching up to the first letter of the mat of the last name for all of these names. Now at this point we have a decision to make. After the first uppercase letter, we've completely matched the name for Mr. T that we can see here, but we still need to match the rest of our other names. So we could say that we will match any word character after that uppercase letter. And we can do that with a backslash W after that first uppercase letter. And now we need to decide what quantifier we want to use for our word characters. So we could use the plus sign quantifier, which would match one or more of these word characters. So if I put in a plus sign here and run this, we can see that when we do that, it matches Mr. Schaefer and Mr. Smith, but it doesn't match Mr. T because Mr. T doesn't have a word character after that first uppercase character. So a better solution here might be to use the asterisk quantifier, which allows us to match zero or more of these word characters following that first uppercase. So if I save that and run it, now you can see that now that it's matching zero or more, it includes Mr. T in there and the other names. Now, I know that we've covered a lot so far, but we've just got a few more concepts to go, and then we'll look at some examples that wrap everything together. So we still haven't matched our Miss or Mrs. names up here. So how would we do that? Now, you might think that we should use a character set that matches either an R or an S after the after the M, uh, and there's probably some ways that we could do that and get it to work, but it would be a bit ugly um, because then we'd have to match an optional S after that for the misses as well. I think a better solution here would be to use a group. Now we haven't looked at groups yet, but groups allow us to match several different patterns. So to create a group, we use parentheses. And within the parentheses, we can match uh, some patterns. So let's say that we wanted to match uh, a literal R after the M. And then we can use this vertical bar character, which is basically an or. So we can say R or a literal S, and then another vertical bar. And then we can say or a literal RS. So now we have three different patterns here, capital M followed by either uh, an R, an S, or an RS. So now with that little change, if I save that and run it and pull this up a little bit, then you can see that now we are matching all of our names. Now, I was just saving some characters by doing it this way. If you think it's more easy to read, then we could have also put the M within this group as well. So I could have just put an entire group here at the beginning and said Mr., Miss, whoops, Miss, or Mrs. So it adds more characters, but it's also a little bit more clear exactly what those groups are matching if we move that M within the group there. And if we save that and run it, then we can see that we still get the same results. Now these groups can actually be used to capture sections of your matched regular expression. And that's something that we'll look at in just a minute. But for now, let's do a quick recap of everything that we've learned so far by looking at some examples that incorporates all of these things together. So I'm gonna open up this emails.py file here, and I might make the text just a little smaller so that we can uh, fit everything in one window. So I've got a file here where I have this emails variable, and we have three different email addresses uh, within this string that are fairly different emails. Now let's try to write a regular expression that will match all of these emails. So let's match the first email address first. So let's go ahead and come down here into our 
pattern where we are doing the re.compile. And now we want to put our regular expression pattern within here. So first let's just match everything before the at symbol here. And we can see that everything before that at symbol are just uppercase and lowercase letters. So to match uppercase and lowercase letters, we can just use a character set uh, with a lowercase a through a lowercase z followed by an uppercase A through an uppercase Z. And now we want to match one or more of those until we hit the at symbol. So to match one or more, we can use the plus sign. And we want to match one or more of those all the way up until we hit the at symbol. And we can just put in a literal at symbol for that. Now after the at symbol, we have only lowercase letters, but let's go ahead and put uppercase letters in that character set as well. So we'll do uh, lowercase letters with a lowercase a through z and an uppercase a through z. And again, we'll put in a plus sign to match one or more of those. And then finally, we'll match those all the way up until we hit this dot com itself. So for now, we can just put in a literal match for that. So I could say backslash dot to literally match that dot there. And then just a com for dot com. So if we save that, and run it, then we can see that we matched that first email address. Now, just to get some more space here, I think we're done with the snippets file for now. So I'm gonna bring this back over here, go to view and make this a single column again and go back to my emails file. So now that we're matching the first address here, let's build this up so that it matches the other two as well. Now, it looks like it's not matching the second address because we need to allow a period in the first part of the expression because we have a period right here. So we can add that to the character set of the first part just by putting a dot in that first part of the character set there. And another thing that's different is that this ends with a dot edu instead of a dot com. So to match that, we could just match a group here. So I will wrap this dot com in parentheses to create a group. And we can say that we want to match com and use the vertical bar as an or and say or dot edu. So if we save that and run it, then you can see that now we are matching that second address as well. Okay, so good. So we're building this up a little bit at a time. So finally, to match our final address, it looks like we need to allow numbers and a hyphen in the characters before the at symbol. So again, we can just add this to our character set. So we can come here to our ranges and add the digits zero through nine onto the end of that. And we also want to put a hyphen at the end of that character set. And it looks like we also have a hyphen in our domain here. So this is the character set for our domain. So we can add a hyphen to there as well. And lastly, instead of a .com or a .edu, this ends in .net. So let's add that to our group here. So we'll just put in another vertical bar and add in .net. So if we save that and run it, then you can see that now we're matching all three of our email addresses. Now with something like email addresses, it can be pretty tough writing your own regular expression from scratch, but there are a lot of these available online. And once we learn how to write regular expressions, then we should be able to read them and figure out what they'll match. Now I've always found that reading other people's regular expressions to be a lot harder than writing them, but let's look, take a look at one and see if we can do this. So there is a regular expression that I pulled offline that matches email addresses. And I have this here in my snippets file at the bottom. So so let me copy this over and paste it in as our expression and let's walk through this. So first of all, just let me save it and run it to make sure that it still matches all three of our email addresses and it does. Now this looks a little intimidating, but really these are just some large character sets here. So first we have a character set that matches all lowercase letters, all uppercase letters, uh, all digits. Then we have it's matching an underscore, a period, a plus sign or a hyphen. And then we have a plus sign that will match one or more of any of those characters in the character set. And it matches those all the way up until it hits our at symbol. Now after the at symbol for the domain, we have another large character set here. And this matches any lowercase, any uppercase, any digits, or any hyphens. Now I don't know a lot about email addresses, but I'm assuming that since they left out the underscore, the period, and the plus sign, that these aren't valid for a domain. So then that is followed by a plus sign here that will match one or more of any of these characters in the character set all the way up until it hits the last period. And that period is escaped with a backslash. And then after that dot, uh, it will, we have another character set, which will match any lowercase, uppercase, digits, 
hyphens, or another dot. And that uh, plus sign will match one or more of any of those characters. So reading regular expressions written by other people is probably one of the hardest parts of all of this, but if you walk through it bit by bit, then you should be able to break it down like that for just about any pattern. Okay, so the last concept that I'd like to look at in this video is how to capture information from groups. Now we've already seen how to match groups, but we can actually use the information captured from those groups. To, so to show an example of this, I'm gonna open up this file here called urls.py. And again, let me take this down just a little bit here so that we can fit everything. Okay, so with these URLs here, we can see that some of these URLs are HTTP, some are HTTPS, um, some of them have www before the domain and some do not. So they're pretty inconsistent. So let's say that for each of these URLs, we only wanted to grab the domain name followed by the top level domain. So in this case, it would be, you know, for example, google.com or coreyms.com or youtube.com or nasa.gov. And we just wanted to ignore everything else. So let's see how we can do this. So first let's write an expression that actually matches these URLs. So we can say uh, in our re.compile here, we're creating our regular expression pattern. So we can say HTTP just to match a literal HTTP. Now, some of these have HTTPS and some do not. So we want to match an S, but put a question mark after it because if you remember, the question mark matches zero or one. So basically it makes that S optional. So then after that optional S, we want to match a colon forward slash, forward slash. And now here we have an optional www. Some have www dot and some do not. Now you may be thinking that what we could use a character set or something here, but it's actually gonna be best to use a group because within a group, we can just say that that entire www with the dot, and remember we have to escape that with a backslash, so backslash dot, that entire group is optional. So just to make sure we're on the correct path, if we save this and run it now, you can see that we're all the way up to the domain name on all of these matches so far. So let's go ahead and continue. So now to match the domain name, we can just match any word character. So we'll just put a backslash W to match a word character, and then a plus to match one or more of those. And we wanna match one or more word characters all the way up to the dot. So we will put in a backslash dot there to match that. Now we want to match the top level domain, which is .com or .gov. So we can just match word characters again, and one or more of those with a period after that. So if we save that and run it, then you can see that now we are matching the entire URL for all of these URLs that we have listed. Okay, but remember that the point here was to use our groups to capture some information from the URLs. So let's capture the domain name and the top level domain. And by the top level domain, again, I mean the .com or the .gov. So to capture these sections, we can just put them in a group by surrounding them with parentheses. So for example, uh, this section here was our match for the uh, domain name. So I can just surround that in parentheses there. And then our top level domain, we want to include the dot. So this would be the dot com or the dot gov. So we'll put the parentheses before the dot and then here at the very end. So since we just added groups to an existing uh, expression, that shouldn't actually change our results. So if we rerun this, we can see that we still get the same results there. But now we actually have three different groups. So the first group is the optional www. The second group is are the word characters that make up the domain name. And the third group is the top level domain, which is the .com or the .gov. Now there's also a group zero, and group zero is everything that we captured. So in this case, it's just the entire URL. So this would be group zero here. So to show this, our match object down here uh, that we are iterating through, this match object uh, actually has a group method and we can pass in the index of the group that we want to see. So we can say dot group to use that group method. And now we can print out group zero by just doing group zero. So if we print that out, then like I said, group zero is the entire match. So that's just the entire URL. Now, if we printed group one, this should be the optional www. So if we save that and run it, then we can see that the URLs that have a www dot 
uh, print that out as the group. And the ones that don't just print out none values. So our group two here should be our domain name. So if I print out group two and run that, then we can see that that's what we got. So we got Google, Core EMS, YouTube, and NASA. Now group three should be our top level domains. So if we print out group three and run that, then you can see that we get .com, 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 and .gov. Now we can use something called a back reference to reference our capture group. And it's basically just a shorthand for accessing these group indexes. So the regular expression module has a sub method that we can use to perform a substitution. So let's see what this looks like. And we can substitute in these back references which reference the groups. So for example, let's just show an example and that will become more clear. So I can create a sub URLs uh, variable here and I will set that equal to pattern dot sub and now we want to pass in the substitution. So the substitution that we want to use are these back references that reference these groups. So we wanted to replace these URLs with the domain name and the top level domain. So the domain name was group two and we use these back references with a backslash and then the number of the group. So we want to replace these with a backslash two, which is the do domain name, and then a backslash three, which is the top level domain. And now we need to pass in the text that we want to replace. So let me walk through this one more time just because that can be a little confusing. So here we are creating a pattern and this pattern as we saw matches all of our URLs here in our string. And then our sub URLs, we are using that pattern to substitute out uh, group two and group three for all of our matches in URLs. So every time it finds a match, it'll replace that match with group two, which is the domain name, and then group three, which is the top level domain. So now, just to show how that worked, let's print out that subbed URLs and save that and print it out and scroll up here. And we can see that that returned a new string with all those substitutions made. So if you had a large document of things that you wanted to reformat like this, then learning how to do this with regular expressions could save you a ton of time and allow you to do that within just a couple of minutes. Okay, so we're really close to being finished up here. Um, we should now have a pretty good understanding of working with regular expressions in Python, but we've been using this find iter method throughout the whole video, and that's because I think it does the best job of showing all the matches and the location of those matches, but there are other methods that we can use for different purposes, so let's take a quick look at some of those. So first, we have the find all method. Now with the find iter method that we were using, it returns match objects with extra information and functionality, but find all will just return the matches as a list of strings. Now if it's matching groups, then it will only return the groups. So in the example, we're currently uh, using a pattern where we match those names and we have a group here at the beginning for the prefix. So this is only going to match that group. So if I save this and run it, then you can see that it only prints out that first group. And if there were multiple groups, then it would return a list of tuples and the tuples would contain all of the groups. Now, if there are no groups, then it would just return all of the matches in a list of strings. So if I was to change this to this pattern here, to our previous phone number example. So I'll do a digit of with a quantifier of three, then just a dot to match any character, digit with a quantifier of three, any character, and a digit with a quantifier of four. If we save that and run it, then you can see that it prints out just a list of all of our phone numbers. So that's one way to print out all of your matches that you match. But personally, I like the find iter method a little bit more because it comes with that extra functionality of that match object. So next we have the match method. Now match will determine if the regular expression matches at the beginning of the string. So for example, let's change our pattern to search for our simple sentence here and we'll just search for the literal string of start and we want to search that sentence variable so instead of that text to search we'll put sentence in there and instead of find all we want to see what the match method does so let's save that and run it 
So we got an error here because match doesn't return an iterable like find iter or find all. It just returns the first match. And if there isn't a match, then it returns none. So instead of looping through our result, we can just print out that matches variable. So we'll just print out uh, matches there and save that and run it and we can see that it returns that match object with our match now this only matches things at the beginning of strings so if we were to search for something else that is in this sentence so I'll search for this uh, sentence pattern right here if I save that and run it then we can see that it returns none um, because it's only seeing if this is matching at the beginning of that string if we want to search for matches within the entire string, then we can use the search method. Now, I'm not sure why they have a match method when regular expressions themselves have the caret to specify match results at the beginning of strings, but I'm sure that there's probably some reason that I don't know of. So if we wanted to search the entire string for that pattern, then we can use the search uh, method instead. And just like match, this only prints out the first match that it finds. So if I save that and run it, then we can see that it printed out that match object with the match there. Now, if we search for something that doesn't match, then this just returns none as well. So if we search for something like uh, DNE for does not exist, if we save that and run it, you can see that it just returns none since it didn't find uh, any of those patterns in our sentence. Okay, so the very last thing that I wanna cover in this video, and we'll cover it very quickly, is flags. And we can use flags to make our lives a bit easier when working with regular expressions in Python. And you may see some of these at some point when you start using them more often. So let's go ahead and take a look. So for example, let's say that we wanted to match a word, but match it whether it was in uppercase or lowercase or a mixture of both. So for example, if I wanted to match the word start in our sentence, but each letter could be uppercase or lowercase, then normally to create a pattern like this, you would have to do something like, uh, you know, a character set that started with an uppercase S or a lowercase S, and then followed by an uppercase T or a lowercase T, and then um, an uppercase A or a lowercase A, and you kind of get the point. But since that's kind of a pain, instead we can just search for that literal text, and I'll just put those in all lowercase, and then we can just add a flag to our pattern here. So for this, we wanna use the ignore case flag. So we can either write this out, so this is gonna be RE dot, this is gonna be all caps here, ignore case, and if we save that and run it, then you can see that even though our pattern here has a lowercase s and this has an uppercase s, it still uh, matches that pattern because we have our ignore case flag here. And there are shorthands for these flags as well. So instead of writing out ignore case, I could just put a capital I there. If I save that and run it, then you can see that we get the same result. Now there are several different flags and we won't go over them all, but there is, you know, there's a multi-line flag that allows us to use the caret and the dollar sign to match the beginning and end of each line in a multi-line string rather than just the beginning or end of the string. There is also a verbose flag that allows you to add white space and add comments directly within your pattern, which could help you break up complicated patterns into easy to understand segments. Now there are more flags, but those are probably the most common. And I think I'll cover flags further in a more advanced video. Now there's a lot of advanced features that we could go over with regular expressions in Python. And judging from my last regular expressions video, there seems to be a big interest in learning advanced expressions so I'll be sure to put together an advanced video covering those topics in the near future but hopefully now you feel pretty comfortable with being able to read and write these regular expressions within Python but if anyone does have any questions about what we covered in this video then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those and if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them then there are several ways you can do that the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up and also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful and if you have the means you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.